thank you for joining us today on the webinar uh, about health and well-being at work. Um, my main question is, uh, did we learn a lesson that current crisis of uh, COVID-19 gave us? And I'm very happy to have such a wonderful um, people from different uh, related fields to help me to discuss about uh, certain topics and to hear your thoughts about uh, the situation from the market, from the, uh, from the people, mm -hmm. and uh, what do we know? And I know that the uh, current situation uh, is pretty challenging, not just for the economy, not just for the uh, health, but also for individuals and for organizations. So um, I thought to talk about health and preventive health and well-being um, on today's webinar. And I might, uh, might say that uh, when I joined the 24A Life uh, about 10 years ago, um, when we start to talk about preventive health, um, our CEO asked me if I can put some psychological knowledge into uh, the mobile app, and I was surprised, how can we do that? But um, I think now it's the time of the uh, digitalization, so maybe we can also touch uh, a bit uh, this area, how can uh, smart technology help us to overcome uh, these challenges and also uh, what can be done in a certain way as the way we are living now some kind of uh, virtual life. So I'm very happy to have uh, here uh, with me uh, my colleague Andrei. He's sitting at the moment uh, in Rochester, uh, Minnesota uh, in Mayo Clinic Bio Business uh, Accelerator. Uh, and Andrei, he is the head of sales for the 24A Life. Um, then also hello to uh, Greg, Greg Moison uh, from San Diego uh, as an executive sales. So I think we will get some pretty good uh, insights from uh, the market and as well from uh, Rick uh, from LA, uh, Rick Gillia, also executive sales for uh, that region. Uh, I'm pleased also to host you, uh, Gus, uh, as the representative of uh, the business side uh, as a CEO and owner of uh, Team Alvarez and In Touch Marketing. And uh, hello also to you, Teresa uh, Alvarez, as the president of Quality Health uh, Partners. And I'm very looking forward to hear also some of your experience working with people on the field uh, in the current situation. Um, hello also to you, Adriana. Uh, Adriana, Bevakwash, um, you're head of sales and customer support from uh, Team Alvarez, and I'm very happy uh, to hear what are the challenges you're facing now while you are uh, helping people to, um, to set up some uh, digital um, programs as we will talk uh, later. And also myself, as you know, uh, I work for 24A Life from the early beginning and my professional is uh, organizational psychologist. So um, my main uh, area of interest is our organization and this will also be the point of today's uh, talk. So if you agree, um, let's start with a very short story which also impressed me uh, when I joined the 24A Life and the story actually goes uh, back in our headquarter company owned by uh, Mr. Uplaznik uh, as the leading IT company in Europe. Uh, we faced a huge challenge um, when uh, our home country uh, was transferring from a local currency to Euro. And as an IT company uh, taking care for all the biggest retailers in the region, uh, was very challenging. Uh, the deadline was very short and our employees faced the burnout. And Mr. Uplaznik uh, realized that um, not just it's not nice to, to put people under such a pressure, but also from the economical side was uh, pretty challenging having people on sick leave, not feeling well, being not productive. And uh, while we helped them to overcome uh, the burnout, uh, when we came back to the office, he said, next time we should prevent it. And uh, while the uh, coronavirus crisis 
I was also asking our, uh, myself, should we or could we prevent at least some of those things? And um, we'll try to find the answer today. Uh, but while we were spreading and awareing people to aware, be aware of healthy lifestyle, we were thinking how to, how to give people the evidence-based and the very um, efficient and scientific-based programs. And we realized that we need to be uh, in collaboration with the best. And of course, uh, that's how we start our collaboration with Mayo Clinic. And maybe, Andre, you can say a few more words about it since you're sitting uh, in Rochester working with the Mayo Clinic uh, on a daily basis. Um, actually, a few words about our partnership and the current situation in Rochester. I hope at least it's not that cold, but uh, about uh, how do they look on the current situation? Thank you, Eva. Uh, yeah, 24 Life um, office is located here in Rochester, that's right, at the Mayo Clinic Biobusiness Center. Uh, we've been collaborating with Mayo since 2011. And so a long way, but we signed the agreement with Mayo in 2017. So since 2017, we are official partners. It was a strategic long-term partnership uh, with the goal to digitalize evidence-based Mayo programs into our platform, meaning mobile app and web portal. So our goal with Mayo, our role actually, is to digitalize that content uh, as an experienced IT company and to offer it on a market such as corporate telemedicine and insurance. Um, so, especially in situation like this with COVID-19, market itself can see the value of trusted and validated content even more important than before. I can say that for sure. Great, thank you, Andre. And, um, you know, I think that health nowadays, it's very uh, used to word. Uh, a lot has been talked about it. And um, I can say that even before we were talking about health a lot, but for the behavioral change, uh, we need a bit more than just uh, being aware, I know I should do it, but uh, we also need that I want to do it and it's worth and I can do it. So. Um, I think maybe this crisis gave us that uh, additional motivation, but uh, Greg, uh, if you can help me to understand the market a little better, I was uh, recently reading a report from uh, New York City area, uh, which was showing that patients who were hospitalized with uh, COVID-19 uh, have uh, some comorbidities and the most common were of course hypertension, diabetes and obesity. And for these um, diseases, we know that the majority of them could and should be prevented. Um, can you maybe share some insights what's happening at the moment on the insurance fields and the related markets? Well, thanks, Ava. Um, so look, it's the, none of us have ever seen anything like this in our lifetime that I know of. Um, and I think the issue is to try and get our hands around it um, whether it's Mr. Fauci or all the other people that are working within the field, the scientists, which you hear more and more about every day. Um, and the disease itself has so many peculiar symptoms, right? Um, and we do know that there, it is being aggravated um, by the situation. The insurance carriers themselves, um, the bigger insurance carriers, as we're seeing, the testing, as we know, is now being covered. So if you wanna go out and get it, and you can do that. In the state of California, and I'll address that, if you're over 65, you can actually go get your, your test. Uh, the test will be paid for, and maybe Gus uh, and Teresa are gonna say something about that for seniors, because it seems to be affecting more seniors than it does many other people, but we are seeing the senior population being hit harder than anywhere because of those diseases with aging. Uh, that, so the older you get, the propensity to have that. So um, the insurance carriers today here in the United States are certainly um, going to be challenged by a long-term problem. Now we are seeing every day 
uh, Gilead, various firms, Johnson and Johnson saying, hey, we're gonna have a vaccine soon. We're, we're, on the, we're on the brink of a vaccine, maybe July, maybe August. We keep hearing these things. Um, it would be great because I think from a psychological standpoint, you were actually addressing that. If people feel that they're safe, whether this vaccine works or not, I know this may sound kind of silly, but the reality is it's almost like the placebo effect. Um, if, the, if they feel like they're safe or people can say something is working scientifically, I'd love to say that it's working scientifically, that would be great. So are we gonna see an increase in claims from the life insurance standpoint in the United States, we've lost 84,000 people already. Um, the prediction at one point was 200,000, uh, which F Dr. Fauci said. Now we're actually seeing those predictive numbers change. Are we the leading country? We all know that we're the leading country uh, at this point, uh, and not per capita. I still think per capita it's Italy. I might be out of town here, but I, I still think per capita it is Italy. But the reality is, is that when you have a complex situation like this and you're trying to pay the costs, let's go down to the real problem, Ava and the rest of the team, and that is health. Um, our company addresses health. That's what we do best. Um, whether it's the Vitalis machine that we actually put inside of a company to assist employees to understand what their blood pressure is. I mean, I think there's a lot of people running out, out there, they don't even know what their blood pressure is. They don't even know they have high blood pressure. Um, they are asymptomatic when it comes to blood pressure because blood pressure, as we know, is a silent uh, killer. Um, and so they're not testing themselves frequently enough to see what's going on. Also, what's exacerbating this is, you know, we're in times of high stress. So even when we go to our doctors, our doctors will say, well, your heart rate might be up, your blood pressure could be up. Are you doing anything like resilient mind to actually bring that down? Are you bringing your blood pressure down? Are you changing your heart rate? Are you exercising? Are you eating right? Um, what, what are you consuming every day? Um, what are your ratios to carbohydrates, to proteins, to fats, right? I don't think that most customers, actually most of our customers know. Um, I know that Gus can comment from the guys that come into the gym because he owns gyms, right? And people usually go to a gym to get healthy. Uh, they're either gonna lift weights or they're gonna jog or they're gonna do a yoga class or whatever it might be. But the point is, is do you have a regular regiment to help you stay healthy and do you have a way to track it? And what we do best is help people with an application be able to track their progress toward improved health, okay? And not only just physical health, by the way you eat, the 12 habits of highly healthy people, the resilient mind, but also the mental health. Because I think this disease is as much a mental issue as it is a physical issue. So we are really very much encompassing all of the arenas um, for this, and I'm not trying to sell this. What I'm trying to say is folks need to wake up. They need to start tracking what it is they're doing, and they need to become healthier mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And there's another element there is during this decline, we're obviously seeing people having an issue with um, what's their purpose in life? What's their meaning? You know, people are sitting at home in isolation. Um, isolation is probably one of the, the biggest challenges we deal with, whether you're a senior or something else, that's really not really great for mental health. And I think Teresa is going to be able to talk a little bit more about that because that is a big issue. But what's happening in the market is the insurance carriers are definitely waking up. They don't know how to address what they need to address yet, but you are going to see a, uh, a market change in, in the interest in actually health in all areas for employees because the claims costs are too much of a burden in the United States to take care of. We just don't have the resources, the money to keep doing that. Thank you, Greg. It's good to hear that um, um, they are waking up. And uh, Rick, may I ask you, 
um, since Greg already started to talk about it, um, some measures that were um, uh, implemented uh, in organizations. Do you have any uh, information about what kind of measures were used uh, or how the organizations start to cope with the certain crisis? Sure. I actually had to do a little bit of research on this because I am self-employed. I have my own little financial business, but I went to SHRM, which is the leading organization for human resources. And like we've all seen in all the media, uh, corporations you know, are, are pushing forward what the CDC says about social, dis social distancing, protective equipment, masks and gloves, sanitizing the work areas as they come back in place, which you'll see, I'm sure, a lot of restaurants uh, when I go to Trader Joe's, they, they, they clean the baskets before I use them. Uh, there's obviously we're at a stay, a ho stay at home. So uh, some corporations are allowing their, their folks to stay at home and work from home, those that have the capability. And then they're giving people uh, paid time off or using their, their work, uh, work leave time to, to mend their financial woes. But one of the things or four of the things that Sherm said was, uh, and going forward, they obviously, and this is a, an ongoing thing that's going to be going probably now between the next two or three years, but they need to provide more flexibility for the employee. Mm -hmm. They need to encourage and host virtual social time, which is interesting real quickly with my kids, San Diego, Los Angeles, and my ex-wife in Northern California. We play a game virtually on it. It's nice. It's relaxing. It takes 45 minutes. I think people uh, in corporations are are going to show people how in the future they could relax a little bit more. And then they're, uh, they're training people for online collabor collaboration. And then finally, they're trying to foster positive coping, which uh, in three categories, mindfulness, employee assistance programs, and then webinars on resilience, which interesting, one of our main programs is, is resilient the mind. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get more into uh, in the next segment, the, the costs associated with all these different things that the diseases, the underlying symptoms, not the disease, and how the cost is killing uh, corporate America and how something like our program can help out dramatically. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, what about uh, you, Gus? I mean, you're the CEO of the company. Uh, what is your perception of uh, health as a value for the company and any uh, differences before the COVID crisis and now, um, what would you say it's uh, the biggest challenge for managing uh, the company talking from the perspective of uh, people management? I think um, for us, I think uh, in the beginning when this all broke, uh, there was a level of fear that um, our employees started to feel, um, do I come to work? Do I not come to work? Do I do I stay away from everyone? So we immediately implemented, um, you know, the uh, the disinfecting and sanitizing of our entire office, including all of the desks and such. And we provided everyone masks. Uh, we separated out everybody six feet apart. Uh, in um, in the Las Vegas company, we did split shifts. We uh, we brought in a half of the group in the morning, and then at two o'clock in the afternoon, they left. The other half came in and and stayed separated. Um, and then one of the things that we did also was we implemented the 24 Life app, and we really um, uh, we we really took <laughs> we really took it apart, and we 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 started having uh, meetings with all of our employees, uh, and 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 we created this uh, this feeling of uh, you know engagement. So they really had to get into the app. We went through uh, we we uh, uh, we we dedicated one individual person. Uh, as the chairman of, you know, 24 Life and, and the program, and um, they came in once a week, and they started going through the different apps, um, and, and, and had two groups uh, every day, where they, they sat in the conference room for a half hour, and, and, and um, we had a lot of, we, we've had a lot of fun with it all the way through. We're still doing it every week. Uh, um, it's, it's made for, um, for happier employees, for um, for more productive, uh, they've engaged uh, more with each other. Um, we're still separated apart. Everybody's uh, still working. Uh, and and the one thing that in the beginning, what we offered our employees was, if you're uncomfortable about coming to work, it's okay for you to stay home. It's okay for you to be uh, to collect unemployment, if you will. 
um, because you have a family. Some of them, we had a couple of them that had children that uh, were staying at home. So we allowed them to, to stay at home and work from home if they needed to. Uh, we still have one person that's working from home, but everybody comes to work every day. We are, uh, we're an essential part of, uh, of, the, of, of, the, of our country. We deal with seniors all day long. We're doing a lot of well calls, thousands of well calls we've been uh, asked to provide for the insurance companies. Um, so we're doing all sorts of different uh, uh, calls where we ask a variety of different questions. We do surveys, well care surveys. Um, and uh, this, uh, in this time, uh, we actually have grown. We've, um, we've hired 12 people since, uh, since COVID started. So we haven't actually uh, downscale, uh, scaled down. We've, we've actually grown our business. Uh, pretty excited about, you know, when, uh, when this loosens up a little bit so we can get, uh, get working harder and, uh, and helping more people. Very nice. And what was uh, the feedback uh, from the people? Was it uh, hard for them to use the mobile app or? Um... So, you know, it wasn't hard. I have some statistics here because um, really? last week we got into um, um, them sharing their goals and, and you know, you, you, you get into their, their, uh, their comfort level a little bit. They, they get a little bit challenging because they don't want to share too much, but then they started to share more information. Uh, we did do the, um, the gratitude jar uh, last week and, um, and they, they, and it was a lot of fun. They were very thankful for, uh, for a lot of things. You know, we have uh, 45 employees and I have to tell you 40, 44 of them uh, were very thankful that uh, I'm their boss. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> uh, no, it was, uh, um, it was, it was really great. Uh, you know, thankful for life. Um, uh, thankful for, um, for having a great job. Thankful for the family and the opportunities that are afforded. Thankful for coffee in the morning. Um, uh, thankful for no traffic now because everybody's at home. Um, thankful for their new job. So it's been, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It continues to be fun every, uh, Every Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning, we, uh, we all gather uh, in the conference room and, uh, and go through a portion of the app. We continue to do that every week. I really wanted them to engage and they've, they've become very, very engaged. Very positive. Well, thank you so much for this insight. Um, and yeah, I agree. It's the time to have some positive emotions also, not just to be focused on uh, the fear and anxiety, listening to the media, and of course the objective of the uh, current situation. And um, I just wanted to talk about um, a few words about uh, being resilient. Um, I, I understand as a psychologist, these are hard times for individuals as well, so if they can have support also from the organization. Uh, it's even better, and we also talked in the beginning about um, um, loneliness and uh, isolation and how to cope with it. Some people might uh, have a lot of fears. Um, they might uh, see the future not very bright. And um, if we understand that even before they had some um, mental uh, challenges, um, it's, it's really the time also not to neglect um, the mental part as well. So, um, as a psychologist, a lot of people ask me, um, is that the current state or I can do something to develop my resiliency, um, my mental toughness? And I said, yes, it's actually just like a physical training. You just need to work on yourself um, to improve it. And uh, coping with stress, stress management and resilience are actually skills that can be, um, can be developed and can be built. And that's why when we met uh, Dr. Amit Sut on the Mayo Clinic, we thought uh, that his program is just the right one uh, to teach people how to uplift the positive emotions, how to be grateful, how to be kind. At the end of the day, not just toward others, also toward yourself. And uh, of course, to, to be present in the moment, to be mindful, uh, because we know that sometimes we just need to be present here and now um, to survive it and then to uplift positive emotions and that's what the Resiliency Mind program actually uh, teaches us and we said how can we implement it into uh, the mobile app so people can 
uh, use it remotely on, or even those people who are not very comfortable uh, talking about such a thing, they can do it very um, on their own pace uh, with all privacy and so on. Um, so I thought it would be worth to hear also a few words of Dr. Suit about being resilient and how can how it can be built. So Andre, can you help me please just to uh, see the video? Then uh, Teresa, I will ask you if you can help me to 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 comment. What is the single most important capital at any workplace? It's the people. People are the most precious part of any workplace, right? And that capital is struggling right now. So when you look at the data, 75% of the workers have excessive amount of stress. 70% are not fully engaged at work. So what that does is it decreases productivity, it decreases creativity, and it really wreaks havoc on our competitive value. So there are two ways to help. One is you decrease the load. The other is you enhance the capacity of the people. You, you help them be better focused. You help them find greater meaning. You help them have good energy, both physical and psychological. And when you do that, you, you really help create an engaged and passionate workforce. So I think it is absolutely critical that we help the workplace be more resilient today. If you invest a dollar in resilience, some of the research shows that you might recover $2.30. So I believe it's a wonderful investment. You can win a resilience lottery. If you're born with good genes that created good, nicely networked brain and you were raised in a kind family with enough resources, manageable stress in life, well, that's wonderful. But how many of us can claim that? Most of us have to manufacture our resilience. The good news is that 50% of your resilience depends on the choices you make. So you can literally create the resilience habit and build your own resilience. And the rewards are phenomenal. What research has shown is that when you're more resilient, you're physically healthier, you're emotionally happier, you have better relationships, and you're more productive at work. So you fall sick less often, you recover quickly from illness, and your aging slows with being more resilient. Emotionally, you're happier, you have less mental health issues. Your relationships are deeper, more meaningful, and you become more productive and efficient at work. Who could argue with that? Thank you. So, Teresa, what do you think, what happens nowadays uh, if the organizations do not address mental health uh, issues? I mean, this, at this time more than ever um, in our lifetime, have you, you realized that mental health is at the forefront? You know, it's, it's a difficult subject to, you know, to approach. And it always has been. I mean, people don't want to talk about depression. They don't want to talk about mental illness or, um, you know, stress or their fears. It's a very difficult subject. But I think now that we're all, the whole world is in this storm together and everyone has fear and everyone um, is worried and people people can start to talk about what they're depressed about or what scares them and um we can, we're able to you know broach that subject now and the corporation has to i mean they really do you have people who are working from home they're isolated uh they're they're lonely um their support system has been taken away from them i mean you have people who can't leave their home they can't go to their to visit their mother they can't visit their friends um, you're not out there hugging people. No one's shaking hands anymore. No one can give you a hug. There's a lot. Um, everybody is kind of stand back and they don't know what to do next. Um, and so it's difficult. And the corporation does have to lead the way. You know, we do spend most of our time at work. If we think about it, most of our hours are spent um, at work and your work, uh, you're with your colleagues. Now some people are at home and they're not able to even be in that workplace. So how are they, I mean, the 24 hour life app could not have come at a better time. You know, what the doctor from Mayo Clinic has talked about with the resilient mind, uh, it is imperative at, at this point. We need to have someone be able to, to, to lean on someone and to listen to someone and to get us through this. So, you know, corporations, 
they typically would, you know, give you um, maybe a gym membership. Well, that's gone now. We, we can't go to a gym. So, um, you know, what are you, they used to have, um, you know, corporate parties and you would call in a speaker. You know, now more than ever, you need that at your fingertips. People have to have an app where they can wake up in the morning and put something on that gives them um, hope. Right now, um, when, you're, when you have fear, it makes you stuck. You can't move through the day. So when you talk about not being able to be productive, stress and fear make you completely unproductive. The worry that's inside you takes up all that brain space. The thing that you keep thinking about is the stress, whether it's um, financial stress, whether it's your health, and you're just um, depressed because you can't go shopping, you can't go out to dinner. The things that we used to do um, to reward ourselves, what if, I mean, most people, after a long day at work or after a long week of work, they would go to a restaurant, you know, dine with friends, have someone over to the house. All of that is missing. So I think more than ever, you need an app that is easy, you know, to access. I mean, I have this app on my phone. You've got to start turning this resilient mind on every morning and listening to the doctor from Mayo Clinic. I mean, the, the way he speaks about how to overcome your fears and stress is amazing. And if you can get in a habit, I mean, we talk about the habits of healthy people. You know, going to the gym, people get into that gym habit for their physical health, right? We need to have that gym for our mental health. And that comes with that resilient mind. How are you going to overcome this? You know, for me, I've been in healthcare for 22 years and I um, have worked in the emergency room for 22 years. I have also worked in um, industrial medicine. I've worked in internal medicine and family practice. And now, you know, my specialty is wellness. And a lot of it is, um, you know, senior wellness. And these seniors right now um, are, are isolated at home and they're very lonely. I've had the opportunity to telemedicine with them. The, when you call them up and you have, whether it's video or whether it's audio, they, they just need to hear a voice. They need to hear that someone cares. They, I ask them about the weather. Do they get outside? Do they get some sunshine? You, you just, you ask them about, you know, most of them are retired. I ask them about what they did when they worked and we go through all of that. You know, a lot of it I'm calling, um, you know, for honestly their wellness and go through and do, you know, talk about all of their past medical history. But a lot of it is just emotionally trying to reach out to them. People need that more than ever right now. And so we're going to see this in, in, in a corporation. They need to know that they need to be the leaders in this. Um, if you want to, um, you know, everybody's worried about their financial security. Corporations are worried about it. So they're going to have to look to their employees and say, how do we get through this together? So, you know, in, in medicine, we, we talk about best practice, right? Um, we need to talk about best practice when it comes to corporations and um, how does, you know, the business owner relate to um, their employees. And, you know, just like, you know, Gus referred to is that they're taking this app and they're listening together. You know, I think a lot of people know about book clubs, right? We've always had book clubs where people get together and they talk about this book. You know, this app is going to be something that corporations talk about. They're going to want to say, you know what, why don't we um, listen to the resilient mind? And everybody gets on this, you know, same, um, you know, same resilient mind app. They listen to the doctor and you know what, you come back and maybe they're all going to have a Zoom if they're not um, at work these days and they can have a Zoom and have a book club, a, a resilient mind, and then you talk about it because that's what is going to overcome whether it is mental, um, you know, the, the depression. Um, you've got to find a way to talk through it. But just like the doctor said in that, you know, in corporate wellness is we have to get people past the fear so they're not stuck any longer. We need them to feel productive. When you feel productive, you're happy, you know, and we need that happiness, you know, to get through to people so they can move through this. And when you're, when you're positive, um, it, it wears, you know, you, you can spread that to people, right? A smile makes someone else smile. You have to be that person where happiness is contagious. We all know that laughter is contagious. So we need to get people all on that same page so we can bring each other through this together. You know, we're not all in the same boat, but we're in the storm together. And we, you know, 24 life, uh, you know, it's life changing. When you look at, um, you know, the, the mental um, wellness that's in that app, you talk about the physical, like I, like I spoke about, is it, we can't go to the gym, but I can go onto an app and click an exercise and do it at home. 
I might not be able to go to my counseling appointment, but I can click on that app and have someone motivate me and hear something positive. Uh, you know, I think that um, Greg was talking about earlier is that, you know, a lot of people don't know that they have high blood pressure or that they have diabetes. They don't know that maybe they're morbidly obese and the comorbidities um, that, that are out there that are really causing a lot of trouble. You know, if, if high blood pressure hurt, you know, we would all know about it. If diabetes hurt, probably more people would pay attention to it. But right now, the one, the one positive that we can take out of this COVID-19 is, you know, the media is talking about it. People are learning that, you know, the um, core morbidities of obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, those are things that um, affect people who survive this illness or not. So they're finding out that if you have obesity, you have high blood pressure, diabetes, you're one of the people who we're worried about, right? So I think it might motivate a lot of people to start paying more attention to their health. And, and definitely, like you said, the, the mental health is huge. But I think that they all are, are synergistic, right? When you feel good mentally and emotionally, you want to exercise, right? You want to eat better. So it all is, um, in, you're, you're all in it together. We have to have all of it. And that's why this app is, is mind-blowing. You know, it is, it's, it's great that you have all of that at your fingertips. Thank you, Teresa. I completely agree. We need to give, as an employer, uh, people something to talk about because so little stimulus are now around them. They're staying at home. But to have something uh, that's common for everyone and they can discuss it, I think that's very wonderful. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Do you think that uh, mental health will now get more attention uh, or it will be, again, neglected? Well, I personally know that mental health has been something that's been addressed, whether you're going to a psychologist to have counseling sessions, or you're going into group psychology, or you're a member of Al-Anon, or you're a member of AA, no matter what it is, it's always been there. The question is, is how now do you receive it? And I think Teresa was saying, the application is a supplement um, to help people along the way. Um, I think the programs that are in the application, whether it's the 12 Habits of Highly Healthy People, or it's the Resilient Mind Program, or it's the Wheel of Life, all of those are adjunct. Um, there are opportunities for people. Um, from a mental health issue, Teresa addressed it a little bit. It's a whole mind, body, spirit element, right? And when you start to connect the three areas of you know, what am, I do, what am I feeding into this receptacle upstairs, which is then processing. And we, as you said, uh, Ava, you know, it's about staying present because many of us are worried about the future, but we really can't do anything about it. And we look to the dead past. I always said, it's a canceled check or a promissory note. Really, all we have is now. And I know that sounds a little bit trite. Eckhart Tolle's written about it. All kinds of people speak about it. Deepak Chopra talks about it. Uh, Oprah talks about it. But the reality is, is that they can't be wrong. Um, all we really do have is now. So if you said, hey, well, my bank account is dwindling, um, I, I'm having my relationships are, are faltering. It's really the mental attitude you take toward that and the resiliency that you build up. And one of the things you find about most people, Gus is a great example. Um, most people that succeed, you know, if you're going to rethink your success, most success, if you look at all the way back to Napoleon Hill and you look till today, what is the one common denominator? And what is the one common denominator in our country is persistence. Um, it, during this time, we say we're all in this together. What I say is you can't give up. Um, the reality is you can't give up. You've got to continually just forge forward. And if you took a mental attitude that all I had is today, and all I can do is take an action, because immobilization, which is what Teresa was just talking about, being immobile, right? Just saying, oh, sitting here and doing nothing does absolutely nothing other than to foster more fear, to foster more anxiety, to foster more doubt. 
all I say to people is do one thing every day and do it well. What is it can you do? Uh, Teresa says she picks up the phone and talks to seniors, right? I do a podcast show in the last uh, seven days. I've done 15 podcasts um, with authors on things like rethinking success, you know, conscious luck. Um, the reality here is, look, there's a plethora of information out there anywhere we can go to get it. We know that the 24 a life application is really done and empirically designed with the doctors who've studied this to say, hey, we have proven numbers that if you were to take these steps, one little step, you know, Gus knows better than anybody. You come into a gym, you're 100 pounds overweight. Your goal every week is to lose three pounds. I don't care if it's Weight Watchers or the gym. The reality is, you start to feel better of yourself by the action you took, the one small step that you took that actually created the result. And that's all that this application is. It's a series of actions that we take every day that improve our mental and physical health, okay? And I will even go as far as to say our spiritual health because the reality is, is that if you're not working with that one, what is my purpose? What is my meaning in life? If you don't have those at the top of your list and you're not working on them, all the other stuff is meaningless. So the answer to your question is it isn't an answer. It's the work that you have to do, the persistence you have to put in and the day-to-day -day steps and actions that you can take. The application is a reminder. You know, Andre and I have had this talk before. An application does nothing if you don't use it. We all have probably 50 or 60 of them on our phone, but how many of them do you use? If you use this application and you take those small steps, you're literally going to see progress toward what you want to do. And you know, and speaking about that, and Eva, um, it's interesting. I know um, in the um, hospital where I work, they have those. Um, you know, you know, like the steps where you have your, you know, they have their watch and they're doing their, they're monitoring their steps and their exercise. You know, corporations a lot of times will reward their employees, um, maybe down at the cafeteria, they'll fill up their car with um, money. They'll get money for their exercise that they, um, you know, so, so much exercise or so many steps that they made. I think that, you know, corporations would pay attention. I, like, like you said, right, if, they don't, if you don't use the app, it's not going to help you. But you know, corporations, it's a perfect time for them to reward um, their employees by noticing that they're using this app. And, you know, and, and having these um, you know, moments where you can get together and discuss what people have you know, found that helped them during this app. You want to use that best practice. You know, what did you learn? And Gus, you know, Gus and his um, employees are doing it. And for everybody to be able to open up, grow closer, and get motivated together, it's amazing. When you motivate one person, you know, of course that's great, but when you motivate the whole army around, I mean, that's when a corporation takes off. And, you know, to get people to use that app, there's motivation in it, right? So they're all paying attention. What, what can we, what kind of incentives do we give the employees to use that app? Because in the end, the corporation is um, going to succeed together the more people that are using it. Definitely. Um, agree. Andre, what about you as a head of sales? Do you see any changes uh, in the market, the interest for such a program, soft skills, and so on? Yeah, exactly. I would say um, increased perception. Mm -hmm. And we are experiencing this momentum right now. Uh, so I must say that 24 Alive team was active the whole time during that crisis. We were working, you know, virtual meetings and so on. Uh, so I, I could say that even decision makers have perhaps more time now because they have less meetings and conferences and travel to talk about it. And uh, we hear that all the time. Um, it's increased perception on markets. It's, that's clear. And um, they are or even that how corporations would even easier overcome situation like that with healthier employees. And they don't talk about, uh, about reducing medical claims and you know, counting cents and cutting costs about, they see the value. And that's, that's important how I see it. They see the value. 
Nice to hear that. Adriana, uh, you're leading um, the help center at the in touch marketing, right? So uh, you're actually helping that, let's say, end users or employees to use such a things uh, to help them to overcome the challenges. And I have one question for you because you're the one uh, facing the end users or let's say first users. Uh, I was uh, find uh, I found the research. Uh, it was from Singapore, but uh, they find out that during the lockdown, uh, people start to uh, act more uh, healthily. They uh, start to live healthier. Uh, they are reporting even to uh, decreased levels of stress. And um, what would you say? What do you hear from uh, employees from people? Well, I can definitely see that trend happening. Uh, employees are having more discussions about their overall health. We're seeing them be more aware of counting their steps, uh, paying attention to what they're eating. They're also seeking resources. They're definitely looking uh, to, you know, uh, online programs. They're looking for recipes. Um, they're also uh, looking to uh, looking towards more mindfulness activities like meditation. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of people, at least from what I've experienced with some end users that I'm working with, that actually have the app. Uh, one of the takeaways um, is about the gratitude and incorporating that gratitude in their day-to-day -day lives and there's uh, quite a bit of conversation around that. So uh, I would have to say I would agree with the study. I think uh, we are seeing uh, people having a more health conscious uh, mentality and uh, uh, I really do enjoy having these conversations with the end users and helping them and guiding them uh, towards the right app that works for them. You know, like the Mayo Clinic diet and helping them navigate to the different recipes that the app has. Uh, the ability of the fact that it has the tracker that you can track your exercise, you can track your meals, you can track your, you know, your beverage intake. So uh, I believe that this app is just perfect timing in the in the era that we're in. Wow, thank you. Gus, what about you? Uh, um, why do you think, uh, since you decided to offer to your employees uh, some digitalized form uh, of the content, uh, do you see any competitive advantage uh, of it in current uh, and post-corona crisis? You know, um, I think our uh, our our advantage is uh, our uh, our competitive advantage as a as a business owner. I, I think the com the competitive advantage for us is that uh, uh, people have uh, a lot more spare time um, on their hands because they're they're not able to go out and they're not able to do the things that they used to do. Um, so the digital world has become a little bit uh, more. Um, uh, friendly to the folks that were not using uh, their phones and their computers before. Um, when we introduced the app to all of our staff and our, our, all of our employees, uh, it really became very positive for them. And we're, we're, we're experiencing it now. It, the, the positive feelings, the attitudes, uh, the productivity has gone through the roof for our, both of our companies. Wow. Uh, and um, uh, in-touch marketing uh, especially uh, is, is a very... Uh, is a very consumer oriented uh, contact center. Um, and we of course are, have been put in charge of and given the responsibility to uh, be the customer service end for uh, 24 Life on a national scale. So we're pretty blessed with that. Um, and we've, we've, we've had a lot of success engaging with the population that is um, um, you know, activating the apps uh, we're able to take them through, download the apps, and show them how to use the apps and all of the different programs um, that are on the app. Our staff has has gotten a lot of training. So, because of our staff is is very active using the apps, uh, the app as well, they they become very familiar with the intricate details of all of the different functions that the modules have. Um, I personally uh, have really taken. Uh, Taking the Resilient Mind program, and I just I'm I love with that program from the very beginning. Uh, uh, I mean, um, all of a sudden, um, uh, I started paying attention to the color of my family, kids, and my kids, and my wife's eyes, and how they changed throughout the day. And my daughters, uh, uh, at one time when when I was taking them to school, when school was available, 
I started um, uh, talking to them uh, and they were like, dad, what's, what's wrong with you? You keep staring at our eyes. <laughs> so, um, so it was pretty interesting uh, um, and paying, you know, paying two minutes of undivided attention to each individual family member. Uh, not so much about uh, uh, they cleaned their room up or, you know, all of the different things that, that, uh, that you, you, you get after them for, but just, just life in general, you know, it's really changed a lot of the attitudes in our, in our home. Um, uh, at, at work, um, I think um, um, our, our staff has just uh, completely changed around. I mean, it's really a, a wonderful feeling that, that, that they use this app all the time. It's pretty exciting. Um, the, the, the customer service center being able to help so many people engage with the app, um, it has really um, helped people understand more about all the positive, uh, all the positive attributes that, that it brings to them that they, that they were searching for. Now, uh, more, they have more time on their hands. So um, absolutely perfect timing for us to be out in the marketplace. Um, little challenging because uh, uh, people, uh, they need to get on the app. We need to get it on their phones for them and stuff. But I think uh, the corporations are going to find that it's a, it's, a, it's a fabulous product for them. Thank you. Adriana, I just wanted to ask you about it since I was also um, implementing the solution around the globe and um, some companies have some kind of concern. Uh, they're a bit afraid of using smart technology, ICT technology, uh, because they had some fears. What if people will not be able to use it? Um, who will help them? Is that uh, means additional work for HR department? Do we need to uh, get on board another person who will cover this? Uh, area? But uh, if I understand correctly, that's exactly what you um, are doing helping the complete North America um, companies to uh, get people on board and get full advantages of uh, the solution? Yes, I would say not to worry. Uh, we are a very engaged team of customer support center. We also have an engagement team that we built out that um, helps the HR along the way in the process. One, to help uh, all of their uh, users or their employees to get activated. Um, along, at once they are activate, activated and using the app, uh, we also provide reports where we're engaging with the HR, showing them these reports, having discussions around topics and, and ideas uh, to help that, that HR or that company form um, of a, a full encompassing well-being program. Uh, like Gus said, one of the things that he's implemented in his, in his company is these weekly uh, meetings where they're talking about topics, they're having the challenges. It sounds like the gratitude jar is uh, was a pretty uh, popular one. Um, also, one of the other uh, activities that they did was a gratitude meditation where they sat in the room for about a minute or two, which is also guided by the program in the Resilient Mind under the first module and they um, looked and reflect on who they are grateful for and they went through that exercise and it was a very emotional exercise and it gave everybody in the room that chance to really reflect um, about their families and who they love and who they're grateful for. So um, we will be here as an engagement team to help the organizations build those type of programs and also provide them all the necessary information, the deep dive knowledge about the programs, how they were developed, who, um, who ha who've developed them, and where the value of each program, um, what the value of each program is about. So that way when that company implements that app across the board to all their employees, uh, they have a, a solid understanding and those employees will be encouraged, excited to use those apps. And then once again, our uh, contact service, our call, our call center is 24 seven. It's unlimited, uh, we provide uh, full support so their employees can call in. Uh, any any of the um, any of our clients can call in, and we're here to support and be available um, and be a strong resources to those organizations that want to implement this in 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 um, as a well-being program. Perfect. So no fears from uh, the corporates, no fears from HR, and no fears for end users. But Adriana, one more thing. Uh, your background uh, attracts me, and I hear. Uh, Greg's uh, word saying that some of the people even um, didn't know they have high blood pressure or um, they are obese. 
they're not familiar with the, let's say, body numbers or their body parameters. And the device in your uh, background is exactly what uh, it helps people to raise awareness, to educate them. Can you tell me something uh, more about it? Yes, we are very, very fortunate at our company to actually have the Vitalis machine. So it is a an absolute treat to have it. Um, it's exciting. Uh, if you can see right behind me, the machine is about six feet tall. Um, it has a full screen uh, that guides you through the steps uh, to accessing um, the uh, to taking the measurements. It's quite easy. It has a simple camera that as you uh, get close to the machine, it sensors the, uh, the sensor uh, picks up the fact that you're close to the machine and then the screens will progress into what you need to do. You ask, it'll ask you a few questions, you'll answer it, and then you um, place your hands over the sensor. You take about uh, 90 seconds um, of a scan and it's uh, capturing all of your um, biometrics and um, it is a uh, it, it's a core technology capacity with sensors combined with AI, AI algorithms, and those sensors are collecting and analyzing your data, and it produces a report that gives you about uh, eight uh, diff about eight different measures, and within each measure, it provides you uh, a further details. A few things that it captures is your body fat, your bone mass blood pressure, blood oxygen, um, and also gives you suggestions on which apps um, are more suitable uh, for your condition. And one of the things that I've personally seen here in the office is people are using this all throughout the day. They're coming in maybe in the beginning of the week and they're testing their results. Maybe they've done more exercise and they want to see what um, at the end of the week what, uh, what that growth is or what, what their uh, measurements are as a result of taking some actions, maybe following some of the um, suggestions from the app. So it is uh, quite exciting to see the amount of people that come in and out just to use the, the, uh, the kiosk here. Um, we definitely make sure that it's uh, always cleaned and, and uh, we take all the proper measures to ensure that it's, uh, it's sanitized. Um, and it's a, a really great uh, opportunity to learn about yourself. And also, I think we talked about a little bit earlier about core morbidities and being more aware of those uh, conditions. And this, uh, uh, this device, this machine, actually uh, gives you insight and is a great tool because if uh, you have the app, it stores the information. Every time you go to use the machine, it pro produces a report and you can always go back. And so when you're going to that doctor's appointment, guess what? You have something you can show him. Hey, this is about, you know, the last two, three months of my experience of, of measuring my blood, uh, my blood pressure or my bone mass or uh, all those measurements. So it uh, is a great tool that you can also bring to your doctor and have better conversations about your health. Thank you. And uh, Rick, can you help me please to understand what are the benefits for corporate America would be having such a employee well-being programs, um, online programs, app programs? Sure. And before we get into the benefits, I, I want to go through some of the corporate concerns because it really gets down to where are the costs are happening with the corporation and how, uh, how drastic they've become. And, and I'm, I'm sharing data from Everyday Health the SHRM organization, American Heart Association, American Diabetes, the Institute for Health. Uh, and these are studies that I went in the last several days to gather information. And first, I'm going to talk about stress, which a lot of us here have already talked about. But 83% of U.S. workers suffer from work-related stress. U.S. businesses uh, in 2018 study will lose $300 billion a year as a result of workplace, workplace stress. Stress causes over 1 million workers per day to miss a day. Interesting, only 43% of US employees think their employees care about their work balance uh, mm -hmm. situation. Depression, it leads to $51 billion in costs uh, due to absenteeism and 26 billion in treatment costs. Work-related stress causes 120,000 deaths a year and 190 billion in healthcare costs. And you know, every, per, every person we've lost in this virus is terrible. But you think about it, 120 uh, million people, no, excuse me, 125, 120,000 people just from stress alone every year. 
Um, on a scale of one to 10, they rated their stress level at 4.9. Uh, the average Americans aged between 30 and 49 seem to be the most stressed group. 55% are stressed during the day. And, and interesting, all these statistics are giving you are before COVID-19. So can you can imagine the levels of, of stress and, and uh, depression and other things that they're going through. And unfortunately, women are more stressed out than men. The, the next area, diabetes. 34.2 million people or 10% of our population suffer from diabetes. And they believe that 7.3 million have yet to be diagnosed. As far as obesity, and, and this is a, is a huge number, um, from 2000 to 2018, the prevalence of obesity increased from 30.5% to 42.4%. And severe obesity, has gone to 9.2% 9 9 from 4.7. The related conditions with obesity are heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, certain types of cancer, and some of these are very preventable. The estimated annual medical cost of obesity in the United States in 2008 dollars is $147 billion. It, the cost per person is $1,429 from somebody at normal weight. Hypertension. Uh, this is crazy, 77.9% or one of every three adults in the United States has high blood pressure. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the cost associated with that. I went to SHRM, which is one of the, the or if not the largest uh, health re, um, human resources organization, and I wanted to see what they plan on doing and their initiatives in 2019, we're talking about reducing costs, high cost claims, targeting pharmaceuticals and so on, and only three of 10 really had any virtual online mental health. So those are some of the important things that we talked about that corporations go through. There's significant ways, unfortunately, but they're ne negative that affect their cost. And so I wanted to now go to some more positive thoughts about how we can move forward. And the 24 Life Wellbeing Preventative Solution Program was developed in collaboration with the Mayo Clinic, the number one hospital in the country. Um, important to realize that the, the programs that are on the app are clinically and empirically proven. Um, I think one of the doctors men mentioned in the video, we saw that for every dollar that you spend on wellness or well-being, you get $3.27 back. Uh, and in your absentee costs for every dollar spent, you, you get a reduction of $2.73. So you know, for convenience, um, we, we have the app, on, um, on the iPad, the, 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 uh, the tablet, the iPhone, the Android, the San Samsung. Uh, we have it on workstations. We have it on pretty much every device. And they have a dashboard, which I think is incredible for an employee, an employer that due to HIPAA, we can't, get, uh, we can't uh, gather individual records, but we can put them together and see what a group or a community are doing. Uh, one of the, you know, we, we talked about this, the different programs the Resilient Mind, the Mayo Clinic Diet, the, the Diabetes Diet, Mayo Clinic Daily Habits, and the Will of Life, and also the 12 Habits of Highly Effective People. And there's, they go through one, one, uh, one topic every month. Quick examples, physical activity, uh, Gus mentioned, which I'm a big proponent of, gratitude, quiet your mind, laughing, trying something new. And the statistics on this from the Mayo Clinic are that 83% after going through it have had a valuable experience with the experts and the insight that they've given and 62% achieve their goals. So the other one I wanted to talk about just briefly in the corporate environment, which we talked about uh, the stress is the Resilient Mind Program. All of this is embedded on the app and it helps defeat and lower stress and improve resilience and, pre and your presence at work. It improves stress management, increases mindfulness, and it's backed up by more than 20 research studies. So when somebody has gone through this, which is interesting, and, and this is important for corporations to understand is, the people that have gone through it, the, 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 the studies have shown that there's a 39% reduction in burnout, a 35% reduction in stress, um, improve resilience, 25%, increased personal happiness, 17% increase, and increased healthy behavior, 13%. So 
and, and, and concluding, these are, these are such important programs that are available. And I think it's important to understand too that as Greg and a lot of you have mentioned, this is not the cure-all, but it's a way to attack the problems that we're seeing in our corporate environment on a daily basis. And I, I grew up in the uh, Hewlett Packard environment where the employee was the key asset of the company. And I think we need to focus back on that again, because if we keep people healthy, less stress, happy, resilient, uh, the corporate dollars, and this is, you know, being in corporate for 30 some years, they care about the bottom line. So for pennies a day per, per employee, they can have a program that's 24 seven and that doesn't disturb the workplace, but gives somebody stress reduction, healthy habits, eating and, and workout program. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rick, for these uh, impressive numbers. Uh, but now in the respect of uh, your and ours time, uh, I'll just give you the final uh, question. If you can uh, just in a few sentences um, answer it. And if you just add on uh, some of your thoughts for uh, our uh, audience, um, did we learn a lesson given by uh, COVID-19? Um, to, uh, Adriana, I may start with you because you said, uh, yes, people are more aware. What do you think? Did you learn a lesson? I think, yes. I think uh, we are learning the lesson that health is important and that we need to take measures now and we need to reflect on um, just our, our state of mind, our mental health, our well-being. You know, are we reflecting on ourselves? Are we acting with gratitude in our lives? Are we eating right? So I think, yes, we definitely um, are learning more about ourselves, about our mental state and our overall health. Well, thank you, Adriana. Uh, Greg, what about you? Did we learn a lesson? I think we're learning a lesson. Um, it, the question is, you know, there's still a lot of apathy. Um, I think apathy toward using an application and apathy toward, uh, toward a lot of things. Um, and so to move the needle, to move the needle to get people not just to use our app, but to awaken um, to truly what is available, whatever the resource is, um, to change their lives is really the key, to change them positively in some direction. So we're constantly learning, we're constantly applying what it is that we see come at us from our environment and trying to process that. And I think more than anything, we're seeing people be able to use uh, critical thinking skills at a much better level than they have ever before. Um, and those critical thinking skills are actually going to be an opportunity for them to say, okay, maybe I am going to start using that 24 hour life app, but it comes down to making a decision and a commitment. And so what I think you're going to see is a lot more commitments and a lot more decisions to move in the right direction. But have we learned it? I don't know, Ava. Are we learning? We're constantly learning. And I, I think uh, the story is yet to be told. Well, thank you, Greg, so much for your thoughts. Uh, Gus, it looks like you already learned that lesson. What do you think? Well, I'll tell you. It's, uh, it's, uh, I have to agree with Greg, though. It's a it's a day a day by day learning process. Uh, uh, as a business owner, you know, owning uh, multiple businesses, um, I've learned how to um, uh, be more grateful for my employees. Um, I, I have to agree with Rick, you know, employers are just not as grateful as they should be. Um, you know, no, no, the, I, and, and I also have to admit that there were times when I always, I looked at my employees as, as, as people that needed to get it done. Uh, today, I interact a lot more uh, with all of them, with, with the ones that I've never in, interacted with. Um, I greet every single person um, when I see them, I look at them, I talk to them, um, how's the kids? Um, and I think they've noticed the difference. Um, you, you need to really take time to show you, uh, that you appreciate uh, the folks that are, that are getting us to where we are, right? They're, they're the ones that, that, you know, if it wasn't for all of them doing what they do, uh, I certainly wouldn't be enjoying the benefits uh, of, of being uh, an owner of, of, of such great companies. Um, 
I'm seeing a lot of results, uh, more productive employees because we're, we're grateful for all that they do. Um, they're smiling more uh, and you know, that equates to happier customers, right? And that they're taken care of. Um, and I have to tell you, it all comes from, um, I personally feel that this sounds crazy, but since we incorporated the 24 life app in our, in our, uh, our daily routine, um, it, it, and it's crazy. I'm, I'm almost, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad that there's something that that's changed our life, uh, in this way that, uh, we've been able to get more positive, uh, you know, reinforcement. It's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful product. Very grateful. Well, thank you, Gus, to you too. Uh, Andre, post-COVID times looks very promising. So did we learn a lesson? Yeah, perhaps I would reflect that if we learned a lesson from our client side or the market side, I think it's the main message. It's not about the costs and savings anymore. It's about the value of healthy habits, integrating them into the daily routine from offered by your employer, insurance, uh, telemedicine provider or health provider, doesn't matter. But we learned the lesson that how important it is to integrate the healthy habits, not just because of the cost, but because of the value. Thank you, Andre. Uh, Rick, what about uh, you? Do you see corporate America will change after the lockdown? Did they oh. learn a lesson? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I mentioned the bottom line, but, um, you know, most most people are concerned about their employees. And I, real quickly, so I, I'm a 24-hour fitness. I can't go. So they send me online apps to do a workout. Um, I, I, I'm a foodie, so some of the things I do, they sent me recipes. Um, the, the, you know, the, uh, the transcendental meditation sent me a thing. I can go and meditate online. They're all they're all in the app. They're they're all in the app. So I think um, I think I've done some information study before. Seventy five percent of people sixty five and older will use a smartphone. When it gets to seventy five and older, it drops to sixty five percent. So if we can get a, a portion of those people to uh, to take a look and and increase their their wellness and their healthiness and their their resilient mind and make them feel better about themselves. We, we've done a huge measure to think we're going to get everybody know, but it, but it's a little bite off the elephant uh, and one one bite at a time. And I think uh, corporations now are rethinking um, how can I make people more happy. I know e each individual family. My daughter just bought a Peloton. She doesn't like to go to the gym, but people who 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 don't have the time to go to the gym can use this for 20 minutes. Like when I finish, there's a 21 minute workout I'm going to do. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think it's a slow process, but I think it's up to us now to educate them on what they have for pennies a day that could help not only themselves, but their employees, which in turn with corporate America will reduce their cost. Real quickly, 15,000 a year for each employee, which Sherm said cost for health care costs. It's outrageous. You know, it could be reduced dramatically by cutting down on obesity and stress and diabetes and, and so on. Thank you. And uh, the final thought, Teresa, I would be happy if it could be uh, yours. Now we all agree we are learning a lesson. Can you please give uh, also your opinion and some positive uh, motivational thoughts for uh, concluding our discussion today? For sure. I think that, you know, the one thing that we probably all learned from COVID-19 is that it put us all on, um, you know, an even field. I mean, everyone is experiencing, um, you know, the same fear and the same stresses and everyone's looking to take that next step forward to have to get at it because we've been in this for, you know, quite a few months now. And I think people are looking for a step forward. Um, it's, it's affected the rich and the poor. It's affected, you know, Hollywood stars and the everyday person. Um, but what it's done is it's, it's kept a lot of people isolated. And I think that's the one thing that we have to, to know going forward is, everything's going to open up slowly. Um, but this app is available to everyone, everywhere, 24 hours a day. And that is um, huge right now. There's not very many things that you can pick up your phone and, uh, and, and have it at your fingertips. I think for, um, you know, especially a lot of these older people or anybody who's, um, you know, suffering from um, depression, they need, um, 
those doctors at Mayo Clinic who specialize in this. They have researched this. They're calming voice. Um, the Mayo Clinic, uh, everybody knows that um, they're at the top of you know, medicine and research and they have a background where everyone can trust. So when I listen to the Resilient Mind and listen to the lot of these programs, there's a calmingness that goes with it. And um, you know, by the time you're done, um, the fear disappears and you're ready to take a step forward. I think a lot of people right now, they need to hear something positive. Because right now when you turn on the news, um, the fear that the media tries to put out there isn't helpful. It isn't helpful for um, mental health at all. And we need someone who's calming and that calming force is the Mayo Clinic, it's these doctors, it's the resilient mind, and it's bringing, um, you know, some, some motivation, and you, you want to feel happy again. You want to feel like there's um, a light at the end of the tunnel, and for me, uh, this app is that light at the end of the tunnel, that you know that you have it within you, that we can make it through this. We just have to take a step forward, and for these, you know, elderly people that I talk to, they need that. They need to hear a voice. They need to hear some reassurance, and I think we all need reassurance right now, and and like corporations, if they can help um, do something, they're the leaders right now. They need to know that there's people out there that are looking to them to help them get through this. And I think um, if they were able to offer something like this, 24 Hour Life, to their employees, it would um, move mountains. You know, it's going to be really helpful for people out there. And they need something that they can use while they're at home. So I wanted to say that, I mean, I've been, uh, you know, I can't thank 24 Hour Life enough. Um, you know, it's right in my world, um, and I've been able to pass this on to others, and the things that I learn from it, I can bring that to my patients. So I feel like I'm a, I'm a better practitioner now that I've had the opportunity um, to use this in my own life, and then you get to pass it on, right? So that, that's, that's a great thing about, um, you know, this world and this app and, you know, telemedicine and Zoom and the different things that we do now is that when we, when we know better, you know, we do better, and we can pass it on to others, and you know, that's how the world goes round, is that we have to share our great experiences. And so for these Mayo Clinic doctors to share all of this research that um, makes their life happier, I think it's, it's really our responsibility to pass it on to others. Yep. Thank you. Um, thank you, Teresa. Uh, I'm also grateful today to see all of you, to discuss with you, to hear so many encouraging thoughts. Um, I think at this point uh, we came uh, to the end of our uh, webinar. So uh, in the whole name of the team 24 a Life, thank you so much. And for the audience, if you have uh, any more questions, please feel free to ask us. We will uh, make our best to uh, give you the answers as fast as we can. And if you have more uh, questions about the program, please uh, leave us a message and the team will definitely come back to you as well. So thank you very much and looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.